This is episode number 734 with Dario Catarino, developer on the Dutch RoboCup team. Welcome back to the Super Data Science Podcast. Two episodes ago, in episode number 732, I interviewed Dr. Daniela Huppenkotten for a fascinating episode on how machine learning is applied to astronomy. If you listen to that episode, you'll recall that I recorded the episode in person with her at the University of Amsterdam. Well, as I crossed the university campus to reach the astronomy building, something caught my eye through big floor-to-ceiling windows. There was an indoor football, a soccer pitch <laughs> for the Americans and Canadians out there, that was well lit and the soccer pitch had robots sitting on it. I could see a big sign that read RoboCup and I was fascinated. So after interviewing Daniela, I was able to find my way into the building and met the Dutch Now team where Now is spelled N-A-O and this is the name of a popular humanoid robot that's manufactured by the giant Japanese company SoftBank. So yeah, so this Dutch Now team, they compete at robot football, robot soccer with these now humanoid robots, super cool. Uh, And it turns out that the goal, the lofty goal of the RoboCup is to develop a team of humanoid robots that is able to win against the human World Cup championship team by the year 2050. I was captivated and so decided to make it the focus of today's episode. Um, In it, you'll meet Dario Caterino, who's secretary of the Dutch Now team, as well as a software developer on the team. He's studying a degree in artificial intelligence at the University of Amsterdam. And he's my guest for this one-of-a-kind super data science episode in which a one-on-one robot soccer game is actually happening while I'm filming. And Dario is explaining how the robots work, including the machine learning that's involved. If you happen to watch the YouTube version of today's episode, you'll see the robots competing against each other in a tight game. It's pretty cool. Um, This does also probably mean that the audio isn't quite as smooth as usual. Uh, Because sometimes Dario had to get involved with the robots as they played, but it should still be a fun and informative episode. Most of today's episode should be accessible to anyone, but occasionally Dario and I talk a bit technically about machine learning algorithms, so those brief parts might be most meaningful to hands-on practitioners. All right, let's jump right into our in-game conversation. All right, I'm here with Dario at the University of Amsterdam. So Dario, tell us about yourself. What are you doing here at the University of Amsterdam? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Dario. Um, I study AI, the bachelor here at, uh, at the university. Um, and as a, basically a side uh, project, I'm also part of the, the Dutch Now team, uh, which yeah, is a N-A-O. Team. N-A-O, yeah. Is that an, does that stand for something? Um, I'm not sure if it's an acronym, <laughs> but these robots are, uh, now robots, so uh, NAO. Um, not so, sure. So that's the kind mean. of the robot. That's what yeah. they're called. Yeah. So it's the it's the name of the robot basically. Um, and yeah, these robots we we play uh, soccer with them. So uh, <laughs> football. Yeah. It's a yeah football here in uh, here in <laughs> Europe. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's what we uh, basically do. And these robots do that do this fully autonomous. Yeah. Um, so there's no human intervention. Nice, yeah, and for our audio-only listeners, Mm -hmm. um, these robots are about two feet tall, (laughs) Yeah. um, and they are uh, bipedal, so they're like kind of humanoid shaped, and uh, we're on a little football pitch, an indoor turf that's, (laughs) I don't know, maybe 20 yards, 20 meters I think it's about, yeah, like... I think maybe 15 maybe meters long. 15 yeah. meters long, yeah. Um, is, is this like a standard kind of pitch size for this competition? Yeah. Yeah. There's like a standard. And so, so yeah, other yeah. universities or maybe private institutions as well have these kinds of uh, now football teams? Yeah. So this is uh, mostly um, a student team uh, project. So this uh, we every year we have a Robo Cup where we travel to um, one location where teams from all over the world um, come by. Yeah. And uh, they all play on these standard pitches. So um, while most teams don't have the facilities to uh, have an in- ent- entire full-size pitch like we do, oh, nice. um, other teams uh, play on half the pitch um, or at least train them. But during the matches, we play on full pitches, yeah. Nice. So let's get a demo going. And then all right. for our, if you're watching the YouTube version of this, you get a real treat because you're actually going to be watching 
these two now robots play against each other. And then while that's happening, we'll talk a bit about the tech that's going on behind them. Yes, so uh, I think we're ready. He's gonna whistle now. <whistles> and the robots come into action. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so these robots, as I said, work fully autonomous. They make a bit of noise, so hopefully it uh, doesn't pick up too much. Um, and what they do is they have cameras uh, in them that uh, do, of course, ball detection to uh, detect the balls. Um, so we apply some uh, computer vision in the form of um, convolutional neural networks to uh, basically detect the balls. Ooh, there <laughs> falls a robot. <laughs> these robots are pretty clumsy, um, as basically these robots aren't... Goal kick? Blue. Goal kick. Blue, okay. Blue. Sorry, I'll have to multitask here a bit. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these... So the robots have just, in the audio-only version, uh, yeah. the, for the audio-only version, the robots have just, one is, fell over as the ball kind of went out of bounds and they were competing. So yes. yeah, so now I guess we're getting like a free kick. Uh, yeah, so these are uh, now... He should be having a goal kick. Um, nice, yeah. But, oh, the yellow robot, is, uh, the orange robot is now uh, <laughs> going for a goal. But um, <laughs> these robots are pretty clumsy uh, because they really aren't made to play football. But that's where the, the challenge a bit uh, comes into play a bit more. Nice. Yeah, um, sweet. Yeah. As you can see, they uh, also react to when uh, a whistle is called. Um, we run some algorithms to detect these uh, whistles, uh, the sound waves at least, to um, filter out a whistle from uh, ambient noise, really. So now they'll like get back into position for the beginning after a goal. Exactly, so uh, our, our behaviors that have been uh, uh, implemented, they now say, okay, a goal has been scored, get back to your positions that you should be at. Um, Wild. And normally we play with a, well, a bigger team so we can well um, control it a bit more. Currently, it's going what, pretty what's messy. What's the standard team size? Uh, our standard team size, so there are um, basically two leagues with two different team sizes. Um, so the big matches from the bigger teams are played with seven against seven. Oh, really? So they really play with seven robots uh, against each other. Um, and our league, uh, as we have a, a, a bit less robots, um, we play five against five. So five five. that's uh, still pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're, for the audio only version, we are watching 1v1 here happening. Yes. And so the players, the two players, the blue <laughs> robot and the orange robot um, have just gotten lined up for another uh, round of play after the orange robot scored a goal. It seemed to take advantage of a goal kick. <laughs> yes, exactly. He, um, he took the chance of the, the, the blue robot not being... Uh, <laughs> not paying attention. Really knowing, yeah, where it was. Um, Nice, but now the, the blue robot is, yeah, it's, it's taken back some control. Oh, knocked, knocked over yeah. the orange robot. So, okay, yeah, so the... we have, um, <laughs> oh, the orange robot's getting back up on its own. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so in terms of machine vision, uh, mm -hmm. so convolutional neural networks in order to be able to detect the ball and I guess the lines of play. Wow, the blue robot just took a kick in the net. <laughs> um, and the orange yeah. robot just seems to, it's, it's kind of lost. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, as you said, we also detect the lines. Oh, the ball is out now. We detect the lines. Um, and these robots, of course, have their behaviors programmed to uh, not go outside of these lines. But um, where should I put it? Goal kick, all right. Um, and as these robots uh, have to, can detect these lines, they also have localization uh, systems because these robots, of course, have to know where they are. This isn't GPS, uh, the GPS isn't accurate enough for this. Um, so they have to do that by watching the lines. So they can have a big reference point here in the middle right. with a circle that they can recognize, the goal boxes, they can detect the goal. There and we go, another goal. A goal is scored there now one, for one. the blue team. <laughs> um, awesome. But, uh, so, yeah, so we had the same kind of situation just happen where one of the robots took advantage of a goal kick yep. uh, to score a goal. So, yeah, now the score is 1-1. One, one. They're resetting positions again. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so convolutional neural networks for vision. Yeah. There's obviously also some kind of uh, machine learning algorithm for detecting sounds for the whistle, which is critical. Yes. Um, and then it sounded like there is in the works 
mm -hmm. using reinforcement learning algorithms to be able to uh, train them for general play. Yes. So uh, currently we are working on, uh, it's still in very early uh, development, but um, we are trying to get their behavior to be run uh, oui, <laughs> on reinforcement learning. Um, <laughs> so we're talking path planning, um, making decisions on which robot goes uh, for a ball. Um, and we would like to see all of this being done with, uh, with reinforcement learning. Um, yeah. But this is also a, all a very early uh, stage but, still. But right now it's more of um, like an expert system where you've hard coded in behaviors. Yes, so it's basically uh, oh, if the, the robot is closest to, uh, to the ball, just that robot is going for it, which is of course a logical system, but there are many things at play because if a robot is with his back towards this ball, um, it would take more time to turn around and go towards the ball than if uh, a robot that can clearly see the ball go yep. for it. <laughs> well, it's very cool. And I mean, and the action, so since the second goal was scored, since it became 1-1, one, one, the action yeah. has been pretty advanced here of like a goal nearly being scored <laughs> and, uh, and both players kind of just racing uh, to deal with that. And now it seems like yeah. we're going to have a game-winning goal from the blue player. Yes. Um, uh... Yep. There it goes. So yeah, two one. Yep. <laughs> um, fantastic. So we can, I think, in terms of a demo, that was fantastic. It doesn't get better than that. Thank you very much for entertaining me with that, and for okay. giving me a general breakdown of the machine learning that's involved in this. Yeah. So if people are watching this video or listening to this episode, and they want to uh, get involved in this kind of robotics competition, uh, to be yeah. Yeah, learning how they can be applying machine learning in the field in robots like this. Exactly. How does somebody get involved? Well, um, most of these teams are, uh, of course, uh, uh, student teams. So they are uh, involved, heavily involved in the university. Um, and most of the time we uh, also try to, uh, uh, now, well, not hire, but take people in who uh, are currently studying at the, the universities. So... Um, in Germany, there is a lot. There are a lot of schools that um, have teams, um, but we're also tar talking Canada, uh, in the United States, in Brazil, in uh, Italy, um, all over the world. Really, even in Australia, we have uh, teams who fly in to Europe uh, to compete as well. In the Robo uh, Cup. In the Robo Cup, exactly. So uh, this year it's going to be in uh, in Eindhoven, actually, which is uh, quite uh, quite nice. It's Close to home for you guys. Here, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's uh, it just hops all over the world. In in two years, we're going to Brazil uh, for the competition. And if you want to get involved, yeah, we're um, yeah, well. If you're at the University of Amsterdam, of course, just uh, pop by our uh, lab and uh, just ask uh, if if there are possibilities to join. Very cool. And if you're in a in a university that has a robotics team, just knock on their door. They're happy to to have more volunteers and more manpower to. To help develop. Excellent. And at this Robo Cup, is the only competition football, or are there other kinds of competitions for these robots as well? Yeah, uh, good question. The Robo Cup is a very broad competition. So we have this, which is the standard platform league, because these robots are all standards. So every team plays with these robots, and they can't make any adjustments to them. Right. Um, but if you look at, uh, there are also middle size league, which is robots that are this high that are fully built More by the like team. like waist height as opposed to knee height. Yes, so uh, they're yeah, about a meter tall um, and they play in a whole different way and there are other technical difficulties. Um, we have a small size, which is uh, like maybe, uh, yeah, maybe 20 centimeters tall. Right. Tiny robots that look like Roombas, kind of. <laughs> um, and that is very uh, tactical. Um, so they play very, uh, very much with passing. And of course, you also have uh, at home, uh, which is a, a league where um, robots that are like a robotic arm crane um, that can do the dishes, for example. And there are competitions for basically every uh, sort of branch of robotics. There is a competition at the Robo Cup. So that's very cool. Amazing. Very <laughs> cool. And it, but, but yeah, it's all football. It's, um, well, mostly it is football, and then we have also have some, uh, yeah, some uh, home tasks that, that oh, are yeah, done yeah, with yeah. the robotic yeah, arm. Yeah. There are rescue uh, leagues, so there are robots that do uh, rescuing. 
And uh, but yeah, it's most it's mostly football with a lot of other branches. Yeah, and I guess that's related to there's so much complexity that's captured by the games of football. So obviously the machine vision stuff, mm -hmm. um, planning, cooperation. So this is kind of it's a it's a nice playground yeah. for learning lots of robot skills for the robots, but then I guess also for you humans, for you students, to be absolutely. learning tons about um, making robotics useful in the real world. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's it has every league has its uh, different types of challenges as well. So um, you see that every uh, type of league has its other play style, and um, with us. For example, it's a real challenge to see how efficient we can get with these robots, with the limited performance that they have. We really have to squeeze every bit of data that we find um, and that we get from the robots out of it um, to make them function as efficiently as possible. Um, and every type of feedback that we can get from the robot, we have to use that and apply that uh, back into the robot. Nice. Dario, thank you very much for letting me take the time out of your day, uh, dropping in on you to, uh, to film this demo. And yeah, very cool work you guys are doing here. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to see how this evolves next and how this RoboCup sport evolves and the impact that it has on robotics. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that one-of-a-kind Super Data Science episode. It was super kind of the Dutch Now team to let me crash their lab and film this episode. A big shout out to Dario and the rest of the team. All right, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, consider supporting the show by sharing, by reviewing, or by subscribing. But most importantly, just keep on listening. Until next time, keep on rocking it out there, and I'm looking forward to enjoying another round of the Super Data Science Podcast with you very soon.